tremble before the might of the elves. All right. Begin. Got some familiar faces this round. Patrick versus True Vit Boy. We're still in semifinals, and the winner of this will move on to finals. And the winner of those finals will move on to the uh, Blizzard's official Tavern Hero Tournament. It looks like both players are uh, going with the Hunter first. Probably a solid choice. So Patrick has supposed this fiery bats on turn hmm. one. It's pretty good. Mulling it over about the coin. Which taking that long it kind of does give the information away that you do potentially have another one drop to Trivia Boy. A huge toad over the Alec. Potentially be able to clear both those minions. Ooh, wow, and he wins the joust with the Coda. Yeah, this is a pretty strong start from Patrick. Oh! Yeah, so far not looking too great. Yeah, it should be a voice force to use. Kill commands early just to clear the 3 2. He has no other good plays. Call the wilds really expensive. Freezing trap is just going to get wasted on the fiery bat, and Alec would also be a bit of a waste dying to a fiery bat. Another joust. So, done. freezing trap to keep the Alec alive. Trying to find a way to get back into this game. All right, so freezing trap is tested. might go down. Or is it wolf? Alright, injured Falder is probably play. Cavalder is at face. Boy has two deadly shots, but <laughs> such a <laughs> such a bad play when there's just one once on board. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Trivia Boy just doesn't want to waste his time with the, uh, the draws and the RNG that he got there. That was pretty bad. Sticking with the hunter. It's a pretty 
it's a fairly one-dimensional deck. You just go for the face, clear anything that becomes too much of a problem. And it's a pretty good success rate. Uh, Patrick, on the other hand, has a Fandral in hand. This may or may not be a Cthune Druid. Not sure how popular those are these days. But just a... I believe I've seen some decks focused around Fandral itself. But I did just see a Cthune, so... Guess that answers that. Job's done. Alright, so True Good Boy has some decent two drops. And Patrick's just gonna be looking to ramp for a while. He doesn't have much to play other than Wrath. some Joust versus a Druid deck. So Patrick's trying to decide if the Wrath is worth hmm. it on the Kvaldir, or not the Kvaldir, bleh, the Elec. Uh, he's got two swipes in hand, doesn't easily deal with uh, the two health minions, and Truvia Boy is going to curve out pretty well with the animal companions. Alright. Patrick draws into Living Roots. He might consider playing it for the minion value. Yeah. Alright, there's the second Elec, but I can see the Animal Companion, just the obvious choice. Ooh, I mean, it's definitely the Animal Companion for once. Uh, probably much better than Leoc in this, cir in this circumstance. Unfortunately, Patrick has the uh, swipes to deal with that. So now Trivia Boy is drawing into his one drop, so particularly ideal. Second swipe comes out and is used to clear. Although, yeah, Patrick realizes he uh, killed the wrong man first. That potentially could have backfired pretty badly. So now that True Bit Boy sees both swipes come out, it's actually pretty good to be able to play all these uh, one health minions now. He just filled his board right back up. So, Cthulhu's. some Cthulhu cards are getting played. Looks like Patrick decides that Vine Shield is more useful than having 3-4 out to soak up the damage. Especially since it doesn't really, tr it can't really trade with any of those fours. I 
it, so... Patrick Dressler Reverse, not really what you want. He probably is, would like another Wrath at this point. And a Disciple is going to be decent coming up. And Truvit Boy can't quite play Call of the Wild yet, and... If it were turn 8 this turn, it would be pretty huge. But yeah, now... Now Patrick really needs some taunts, otherwise this... Call of the Wild is just going to be too much damage. 2-2-4 two, two, minions, plus all three of the summon beasts. So, Brand's coming out. The Cycle Cthulhu. Cthulhu. But with hero power that would leave Patrick at only one health after True Vip Boy hero powers, and it's pretty easy for True Vip Boy to pick up any damage out of the deck, even without the Call of the Wild. Crownmaster wouldn't be that damage, but Call of the Wild is. So uh, scores tied up one to one. Versus one. Uh, Warrior. You don't get to see too many of those. So I'm very excited to see how well this uh, Kasun Warrior does. Just soaking up all the damage and all the armor. Draws his entire hand, doesn't look too much better, but uh, True Big Boy keeps the Doomsayer. Kind of the cure all answer. A little panacea for most boards. That forces the board to deal with it or die. Boy, biding his time. He's got some three drops and a weapon. Yeah. He has free reign to basically armor up and not do anything if he wants to, so... It's very comfortable right now. Both players really looking to get to turn 10. And... Just seeing both those Cthulhu's in hand. Kind of makes you a little excited to see what's gonna what's gonna happen when the first one's played. So ravaging duel probably gonna clear. Actually, yeah, that's actually a better option. Start buffing uh, your own Cthulhu this turn. So Patrick's considering playing the on curve 4 6 taunt for 5 mana. But it's also pretty good to play the Twilight and Hero Power to clear the 2 1. I mean, you're not really afraid of dying anytime soon. Do you hear it's cool? Yeah, Twilight Elder comes out, Hero Power. It's a pretty solid play. Mm. 
Meanwhile, this Ravaging Ghoul is probably going to get played this turn. And then... True Vehicle is probably going to hero power up. Yeah. Brawl doesn't do quite as much work versus Druids as many of the other classes because they don't tend to play that many minions. So, he's going to have to just time that just right. And this second Divine Shield minion versus the uh, weapon class. That is Warrior. Quite the problem. Let the pain speak to me. Kathoon! 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 So True Bit Voice Kasuna is already at 10. That means that uh, next turn he can start gaining lots of armor. Patrick considering killing off the Acolyte to deny the multiple draws. Kill the Acolytes or not to kill the Acolytes? It's either the Acolytes or the Disciple. Time waits for no one. But the Acolyte is definitely more threatening at this point. Ooh. The Twin Emperor is a very good pickup. Oh man. Yeah, and he's gonna stall that out. Feels like the two minions instead of three value uh, is the two minion value is better than the uh, ten armor now because potentially uh, if he combos that in three turns he'll just gain twenty armor. And right now Patrick doesn't have a good way to burst him down, especially through these taunts. So. The swipes are probably gonna come out. He might consider playing both the swipes. Looks like he does. So now, that's both swipes this turn. So... Yeah, you can't, you can't waste the, uh... Bleh. You can't... Bleh. Excuse me. It's unfortunate that you can't wait until Braun can uh, activate that for 20 armor, but True Bit Boy was getting really low. Now he's drawing into a lot more cards. You might consider Wrathing the 6-6 six six to draw another card. Because he can finish it off with the uh, Azure Drake afterwards. There's still plenty of cards to look for to see how big this Cthulhu can get. And with the Enervate in hand, that means that Patrick has a lot of options on turn 10. Looks like he's just trying to burst True Boy down before he can do anything though, so this may be the uh, turn where True Boy plays his own Cthulhu. Yeah, Patrick's, Patrick is trying to set up lethal for turn 10 with the Cthulhu play with uh, how much damage? Looks like 13 damage Cthulhu. So Patrick draws into his own Twin Emperor. 
so he may be able to close out this game. Trivet Boy doesn't have much other than the uh, brawls to really deal with things. So Patrick is considering gambling on the Cthulhu. He needs only five damage to hit, but instead goes with the charge minion. Oh man, but the uh, the draw of the second shield bearer, that's pretty important for True Good Boy. That may have just saved his life right now. Now, True Good Boy is now at 38 health. <laughs> and with two brawls in hand, as soon as Patrick plays his Cthulhu with uh, True Good Boy being at this much health, then that could be a huge swing. That could potentially end the. Uh, game in Truvia Boy's favor because Truvia Boy is likely able to revive his Cthulhu at least once. And it will just keep getting huge. Even more huge. The ancient one calls. So, do you play Cthulhu now, or do you shield block? Looks like Cthulhu is the play. And Pat Patrick playing Druid probably doesn't run any hard removal, which basically all that... That would either be big game hunters, or naturalize, and most of those you don't see that, that often anymore. But if Patrick gets a good turn to play his own Cthulhu... Alright, so shield block is going to get cycled into another shield block. He's, he's digging for some uh, shield slams there, which exactly it is what he just did. So he's... I'm not sure if the f this is the first shield slam or the second shield slam. If it's the second, then Druvit Boy is considering saving it for when Patrick finally plays his Cthulhu. He will likely have enough armor to take it out as soon as it's played and still be in a good position. Especially with the uh, brawl in hand, he could... If Patrick manages to build up a board, he can brawl and then just finish off with left with a shield slam if necessary. And True Bit Boy doesn't care too much if his Cthulhu dies right now. I mean, he would prefer it happen later than sooner. But it's not too bad right now. Because warriors usually carry at least one ability to revive the Cthulhu. So the Beckoner is going to buff True Boy's Cthulhu, make it definitely much harder to kill. And that's just going to keep happening until Patrick finds a way to deal with this. He's out of answers, almost. He has... I believe he's used both Wraths. I know he's used both Swipes. I believe this is the first Living Roots that I've seen, so... Yeah, this is looking pretty dicey for Patrick, but I think the best play is probably the Cthulhu, given how big it is right now. It will probably be able to finish True Bit Boy's Cthulhu, but it's still going. It's still going to die as soon as it's played. The other option Patrick's considering is to play the Sylvanas, potentially steal no True Bit Boy's Cthulhu, but I mean, there's nothing to stop True Bit Boy from just going face. 
and, and forcing Patrick to deal with anything that comes out and keep him on the back foot. Alright, so Patrick's Houston gets played. This is a pretty easy shield slam there. The Cthulhu's chosen and some armor. So Patrick's probably going to cycle that wild growth. Uh, not really sure what he, what he could dig for at this point. There's no easy way to deal with that 4-2 Divine Shield. Raven Idol for a spell is probably going to be pretty huge. Fandral comes into play with that. So he's going to get a spell and a minion. No one. Oh, so did uh, Patrick actually draw a natural eyes out of that? So he's really worried about the seeing that Cthulhu come back. So Trubit will make consider using his first brawl this turn. There's not much to do, but he can also sit on his health for a while. He's at 40 health. <laughs> but leaving the fan draw up is very unideal. So, Patrick. Patrick getting a lot of value out of this fan draw. So Trivia Boy is sitting on these brawls. He's waiting for Patrick to commit more to the board. So Harrison gets played. Patrick doesn't feel like he really needs to draw that many more cards. With what is probably just one more war axe. But leaving that fan draw living is still such a huge problem. Especially since he doesn't know what Patrick drew. For all he knows, Patrick has drawn like more Raven Idols to just keep drawing more and more spells. I have no time for games. Alright, so there's Sylvanas. Just to kind of contest the board a little bit. Trivia Boy is saving his Ravaging Ghoul for a good execute turn if necessary to combo with the Brawl. That's 9 mana that he could potentially use to save his life. And he, he doesn't need to panic yet while he's still at 35 health. But the fan draw really is such a huge problem. Yeah, Patrick is trying not to overcommit to this board, although potentially the Violet Teacher might shut down the minion that 
the death rattle that Sylvanas has to steal a minion, but Patrick knows that there's probably another brawl coming up. And finally, True Bit Boy de deals with the fan brawl by just taking it. You know, he would have rather had the huge taunts, but yeah. True Bit Boy's definitely running out of things to do here. We're down to three cards and five cards in deck. And the fan draw was just such a huge problem that being unable to deal with it may have has put Patrick like back in the lead. Coming out with the uh, minion clear and going for face. Okay. He, do he doesn't know what Patrick got spell wise out of the Raven Idols, but I mean, he knows he's used pretty much all his other removal, so he's just going for it right now. Boy probably mulling over his next four draws, trying to figure out how he can uh, lock down this game. Because Truvit Boy is also running out of uh, removal on his side, and unfortunately, he doesn't get Raven Idols to use with this fan draw. Hmm. Brand Psycho Cthulhu combo. It's pretty solid play. Uh, but you really don't want to play that with the Azure Drake now that you're getting so low on cards because Patrick may end up losing to Fatigue if he draws that. And he would rather force True Hit Boy to draw the cards if possible. Yeah, that naturalize may actually come down to a very interesting uh, little fatigue war. So Truvia Boy uh, apparently does actually have a f the second executes. Uh, not sure what's left to use that on. He's, he may or may not know that there's a Sylvanas waiting to be played. Boy, leaving it up to chance. Oh, and it looks like the Violet Teacher remains on Patrick's side. That's pretty huge considering he still has two spells in hand to keep summoning minions. Yeah, I think the Naturalize may be what locks down the uh, game in. Patrick's favor. I'm ready to learn. Yeah, Patrick uses the wild growth, may not want to actually draw a card with the excess mana. So, Doomcaller, finally! <laughs> True Bit Boy's been looking for this the entire game. So, it's probably going to get played this turn. With or without a revenge? Not sure. I think uh, Truvia Boy would value the armor more. And hoping that he draws into Kasun next turn to be able to swing the game back into his favor. So 
Yeah, yeah. Even though uh, Patrick has naturalized and Sylvanas, well, like the Sylvanas isn't on the board, and the naturalizes that he would prefer to save for the Cthulhu uh, is probably better off used on the seven nine. Especially since the Cthulhu's so huge. That's I mean, by the time you're able to naturalize it, you may have already lost from Cthulhu's battle cry. So this, uh, I don't, I don't see much better than a Ragnaros play. Sylvanas is tempting. But that puts Patrick on the back foot. If Sylvanas is played, True Bit Boy would just go face, force Sylvanas to trade into the 7 9. Which True Bit Boy could then execute, and eventually he will draw into Cthune again. And then Patrick will have absolutely no way to deal with it. So, yeah, the. So Patrick is. Choosing to better doll on Ragnaros. And now, Cthulhu has to kill that Ragnaros. Cthulhu does not kill Ragnaros itself, and the Truvit Boy, or the Execute Truvit Boy has been saving for the rainy day, finally comes into use. And the Sylvanas that Patrick I have no time for games. couldn't use has just basically been a dead card. Can't steal the Cthulhu, couldn't steal the 7 9. I can see. So, yeah, very, very clutch. I was actually expecting it to almost go into death by fatigue damage. Alright, so it looks like both players kind of taking a breath. It was a very tense matchup that came down for two fatigue. Patrick decides to stick with the Cthulhu Druid. Uh, True Bit Boy with the uh, either Cthulhu Warlock or Reno Warlock. So, True Bit Boy pretty satisfied with his hand. Uh, Patrick manages to uh, coin into Wild Growth again. So, looking pretty good there. Uh, Patrick also has Enervates. He can pro potentially get out the Sylvanas pretty early on. Or on turn two, he could play the... Uh, Oh, never mind. He's actually choosing to use the Innervate this turn to play the Chosen instead of waiting for turn two to get the Wild Growth. So yeah, looks like Patrick has uh, decided to go with the mindset of taking out Truvia Boy before he can potentially Reno or Cthulhu. Or 
or even even against the uh, kind of zoo warlock, that's pretty good. It's difficult to deal with the 4-2 divine shield on turn one. Alright, so Raven Idol. Savage Roar, Healing Touch. He might go for Healing Touch or Power of the Wild. Let's but Savage Roar is apparently the decision. To just, that's a very interesting uh, decision to keep the Cthune's Chosen on board. with just enough mana to actually pull it off. Patrick just nourishes, card draw, still dedicating himself to uh, face. And True Bit Boy stabilizing a bit with that Mortal Coil, managing to uh, give him the upper hand <laughs> in the Divine Shield War there. Decisions, decisions. Patrick dedicating himself to uh, dedicating his removal early on again. Something that's been pretty consistent in the past few games. The Living Roots didn't get played. That was a very curious decision. So Trivia Boy just <laughs> heals right back up a bit more, and he draws into, he's got a Reno, and he doesn't have to worry about too much right now. And as soon as the second Cthune card gets played on Trivia Boy's side, uh, Emperor Vecklor is going to get a lot of kind of work done there too. Patrick was going for kind of an early kill, but Trubit Boy's been able to stabilize pretty well so far. Oh, Twilight Drake, very good pick up off the uh, hero power. So now Trubit Boy can go back on the offensive again. The it's an upper back one. Uh, is it, which means there isn't a particularly good way to deal with this board. So Hellfire may get used. Uh, 
Hellfire in combination with the Disciple of Cthulhu may be used to clear this board. It's really risky to leave it up. Uh, much up on Patrick's side when you're at 16 health. Thoughtfully tedious game. The ancient one calls. Alright, so swipe. Very good turn for swipe. So now, this definitely is probably a Reno turn. Yeah, it was either card draw or. Play the imp gang boss, but I mean, if you're gonna heal up to full anyway, why not just draw the card? Alright, so wild growth getting cycled by means of it becoming excess mana. Draws into a 3 4. Uh, Fantral's in hand, probably want to save that for next turn. Alright, so there's the Spellbreaker. Ten mana, the Twin Emperor play. It's kind of the obvious play. I'm not sure if Patrick's used both his swipes yet. I know he's used a lot of removal. I think he's used one Wrath, one Living Roots, and one Swipe so far. I might be wrong. If you're paying more attention than me, then good for you. Definitely losing out on board presence to the uh, Twin Emperor Vecklor. Oh, Shadow Flame, pretty good pickup, especially if Truviat Boy runs uh, Sylvanas. Might be able to steal something pretty huge. So Thor Sand going to make so many things possible in the coming turns. Ideally, True Vit Boy would have something like a Draxus or or Cthulhu in hand to reduce its cost and still be able to play things. But uh, I mean, some reduced Bran is pretty good. Reduced Shadow Flame, reduced Shadow Flame and Sylvanas. It's like that's a pretty great combo, really. So second swipe comes out, and that forces Patrick to clear with his face, but he does manage to take the Thor Sun out before he can be any worse <laughs> for 
for him than it already is. Oh, wow. Who knows what secrets well, here come the battle cry. <laughs> so now that Patrick's used a lot of his primary board clear, Tribute Boy can kind of feels free to commit <laughs> as much as he wants to the board, especially with uh, Patrick only having two cards in hand. So, True Boy has just like everything he really needs. He's got a Silence, he's got sh Shadow Flame in case you need to deal with something with c combined with the Power Overwhelming that can deal damage and clear the board. It's It's practically <laughs> what a Blade Flurry costs now, the 4 mana. Except it does what Blade Flurry used to do. No time for games. So there's the Twisting Nether, but power overwhelming, Your magic shall not save you. and silencing the Sylvanas. I have no time for games. Trivet Boy plays his own Sylvanas to deal with any potential Ragnaros or something threats that may come out of Patrick. Behold the rage of the fire! Well met. There we go. So, uh, I don't. I don't really see a good way for Patrick to come back from this. committing to the board, just keeping threats there, trying to finish this out as soon as possible. He can't really play the Corrupted Seer, because that would <laughs> kind of backfire and close his own board. So there's the Ragnaros that comes into play. Uh, Trivia Boy doesn't have Sylvanas anymore, but he does have Big Game Hunter to deal with that, without having too many issues. But Ragnaros does manage to clear one of the bigger minions. So that does mean that lethal is not set up. This I've got turn the yet. Beast in my and big game hunter is so good, he kills it twice. I can see. And Truviat Boy takes it three to one. <laughs> 